So recently I found an incredibly good deal on a Dell Optiplex for just 90 euros. The best part was that it had an Intel Core i7. So I just had to see if it was a good deal. Let's find out if it is and if the machine is still worth it in 2022. This is the Dell Optiplex 9010 Ultra Small Form Factor or USSF. It came with an Intel Core i7 3770, which isn't the right one for this machine but it still works pretty well. Now that's what I call some sneaky overclocking. It also came with 8GB of DDR3 desktop sized RAM, a 500GB hard drive and a 200W power supply. Now you may be thinking, geez 200W isn't that much, especially that this thing has an i7? Well the i7 in here does not consume that much power, and neither do the other components. So 200 watts is plenty for this machine, especially for the size. The I.O. in this machine is actually very good for the size. On the front it has two USB 3.0 ports, even though they aren't blue for some reason, a microphone and a headphone port, a laptop style DVD RW drive, and of course, the power button. On the back we have a rather cool server style panel that comes out to reveal the Windows key and the service tag. On the bottom of this panel we find the usual Dell information, which on bigger machines such as the SSF unit is located on the bottom of the machine. Now for some more standard I.O. It has two USB 2.0 ports for a mouse and keyboard, two USB 3.0 ports for any other devices, again in black rather than in blue, and a 1 gigabit Intel Ethernet NIC for extra reliability and vPro support. Further down we have a serial port for those of you who still use devices that connect through serial, two display port 1.2 ports and a standard VGA port. Then there's a line slash microphone in jack and a headphone slash speaker out jack as well. And then of course the system, there's just a blanking plate. Now when I got the machine it was slightly dusty which wasn't very hard to clean. And I also had to replace the CR2032 clock battery since it couldn't remember the time anymore. It was very common on older Dell machines for the clock battery to go out. Okay so here are the internals of the tiny Optiplex. As you can see it is very cramped in here, it's like a little ducting system for this fan right here, so it sucks in air, it pushes it through the power supply, and it goes out this way, probably pushing it out that way. It probably supplies a bit of air towards the hard drives and the motherboard. Um, so to get like the DVD drive and stuff out, first of all you have to remove the front, front bezel cover. And just you just pop those out like the normal ones, and then there's a little tab pusher here, so you just push that. Kind of like a vertical one of these, and this just comes off. It's so small compared to the other ones. And then there's like a little latch here, and this comes up, and your wires are plugged into your hard drive and your DVD drives. So I'm trying to unplug those. See here, and these just are really short little wires, and then you unplug them from the back, and then you refocus your camera. So here's this little tray assembly. It has the DVD drive, just a simple blue tab, and here's your hard drive. Four screws, easy peasy. All right, so here's the fan. As I was saying, it blows air through the power supply, which is a 200 watt, 80 plus gold unit. I'm pretty sure. Yep, 80 plus gold unit. Uh, so the air comes this way through the power supply. There's another vent here, pushes out this way, which you probably just get smashed to the side. So it just goes out out the back. Uh, probably pushes a bit more air this way as well. Here you have a, a mini PCIe slot. That's for a Wi-Fi card. I don't know if you can put an SSD in there. I'm not completely sure. And you can route the Wi-Fi antenna through the back here. And I've seen other people do it through this little gap here. And here's this funky cooler. So the CPU is under here. The semi overclocked i7 there's three heat pipes that come up into the heat sink which you cannot see into the heat sink right here the fan blows out this way and out the back so i'm just going to disconnect the fan real quick to show you it just has this little latch that moves the fan up it's a foxconn fan i'm not sure exactly why there's holes in the bottom of the fan like does it suck air from the bottom and the top it's kind of weird um yeah you can add a speaker there's a speaker little speaker area here and there's a speaker connector there on the motherboard and uh, there's USB 3 on the front 
which is nice because the Dell Optiplex 3020 small form factor does not have USB 3 on the front. So there's a little USB 3 connector like on normal PCs, I think. I'm not completely sure. And here's are the two slots of uh, RAM, full, slide, full size DDR3 slots. So I'm going to take out these six and show you guys. Okay, there you go. So it's PC3 1200U RAM, 4 gigabyte stick. And then the other one, I'm pretty sure this one was um, added because it's a Kingston stick. There you go, PC3 1200U, 4 gigabyte stick. So four and four makes eight. So I'm just going to put these back into the slot. Of course, I put them on the wrong way. Few moments later. So there's our two sticks of RAM over there. Oh, pan the camera. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a very compact machine. All right. Let me show you a screwdriver, for example. Here's a screwdriver to compare. Hold on, let me just zoom in. That's a screwdriver, yeah. So that's pretty much it for the internals. We're going to move on to uh, performance this time. When I got the machine, it had Windows 10 Pro pre-installed, but I reinstalled a new copy of Windows 10 Pro anyways. Now it's time for some synthetic and real-world benchmarks. I'll be comparing this machine to a newer generation Dell Optiplex 3020 small form factor. Let's pause now to see the specification differences. First, in Cinebench, we see that this machine wins by about 200 points, which isn't that significant. Moving on to Silverbench, we see the same difference again. Next up, the 7-zip file compression and decompression tests. As you can see, in the decompression test, the smaller machine manages to win again. As for the compression test, the bigger Optiplex manages to win for the first time. Now we will try to watch 4K, 1440p and 1080p YouTube videos on both systems. Starting off with 1080p, we see that both systems manage to pass. Moving on to 1440p, both systems pass again. And finally, the 4K tests. As you can see, the Optiplex 3020 SFF fails here. I think a more beefy CPU would help in this test, especially when actually outputting to 4K as well as watching in 4K. Up next, real world benchmarks. I will only be testing Minecraft since it's the only game I have on hand. I'll be testing three versions of Minecraft. 1.16.1 since it's a good balance between features and performance. It's also the most popular version of Minecraft to speedrun on. Next we have 1.8.9. I'm testing this version because it is the most popular version for PvP. And finally, 1.19.2. The only reason I'm testing this version is because it was the latest version out at the time and it's a bit more intensive thanks to the newer terrain generations compared to the other versions. If you want to see how the machine actually performed rather than just graphs, comment down below and I'll be sure to make a video on my second channel showing that. Okay, so I just quit the game and we can see the temperatures this time, so we're getting about 70, we got 80 here, it should show us the max temperature, yeah, so we got 80 degrees maximum on the CPU package, which is not that bad, uh, you can really feel, feel it on the exhaust, you can really feel the heat from this um, Optiplex, uh, uh, overall, the cooling system is not bad on this system, it's not hitting like 90 degrees or something like that, but not the best either.
I think this machine is very good for anyone looking for a cheap, fast and compact machine, especially if you can find one with decent specs and for cheap or even for free. But if you're looking for a gaming machine, I would recommend a larger machine such as the desktop, mini tower or small form factor variants. I also recommend the next generation of Optiplexes, the 3020s, 7020s and 9020s, since they have 4th gen Intel processors rather than 3rd gen, which gives extra performance for an extra 20 or so bucks. Anyways, that's about it for today. If you're looking for something else to watch, I recommend my Dell Optiplex 3020 review, the one that was used to compare in this video. Please like, subscribe and share this video because it helps me out a ton and only takes you a few seconds. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.